canal is one of the very important links connecting the Mediterranean Sea with the Red Sea. So today we would be talking about a little of geography and history of the Swiss Canal and the recent blockage that has happened in the Swiss Canal. So the idea is it basically separates two important continents. So it separates Africa from Middle East and Asia and nearly 12% of the global trade that actually takes place moves through the Swiss Canal. The idea is to reduce the link between the two. Now, if we look on here, what is the most important thing? In this diagram, as you can see, if I'm trying to move from the region of Britain to the region of, let's say, India, previously I had to move whole of the way through the Cape of Good Hope and then uh, reach India. So through this path, the route was very very long alternatively what was suggested was a relatively smaller route that smaller route moved through this region north of africa which was the mediterranean sea and here you have the red sea but the connection between the two is the region which is known as the Swiss Canal region. Now what is the Swiss Canal region and why it has been so important over the years is something that we would understand now. So if we try to zoom in here, we would see that there are two important locations. This is the region of Egypt and this is the Sinai uh, Peninsula that is there. So here we have the region of Egypt and then we have the Sinai Peninsula that is there. The region between the two is the region where you have the path for the Swiss Canal. The northernmost region is the region of Port Said, which is considered as the northern point where you have the starting for the Swiss Canal and in the south you have the Port Tefik, uh, which is the southernmost point for the Swiss Canal. Going a little into the history, this was something that was started in 90, uh, 1859 and between 1859 and 1869 during the Ottoman Empire, the idea of Swiss Canal was developed by the Swiss Canal Company. Now this Swiss Canal Company started the construction of the Swiss Canal in order to reduce the distance that was there and the path that we had to traverse through the whole of the Africa would be significantly reduced through this means. So this was the basic idea that was laid down initially. The whole idea was brought into effect by Ferdinand uh, D. Lespace and he was one of the pioneers for drafting the model for the Swiss Canal to actually take place. As of 2020, the recent uh, editions that we have seen, we have nearly 18,500 vessels that cross this region. That means effectively, if we talk on a daily basis, there are around 51.5 vessels that cross this region from Mediterranean to Red Sea or from Red Sea to Mediterranean, whatever way you can consider as part of this. Now, this whole idea was again, interestingly, uh, brought under the concept of nationalizing it under Nasser. So Nasser was the leader of uh, that time in Egypt and Nasser tried to nationalize the Swiss Canal. However, this was one of the locations which had strategic importance and two of the nations had important eyes on it. One was Egypt and the other was Israel. Now these two nations were constantly having an eye on it with an idea that this could be strategically important. So what happened was the nationalization took place in 1956. Now after the nationalization took place, there was the Swiss Canal that was maintained and operated by the Swiss, Can uh, Swiss Canal Authority or SCA as it is called as. Now the Swiss Canal Authority was responsible for the maintenance and the operation of Swiss Canal during that region. What happened was under the Constantinople Convention that took place, uh, Constantinople Convention basically said that this region would focus on 
um, free movement of all the ships, be it commercial, be it for military or war purpose, without any distinction of the flags. That means whatever country it belongs, free movement would be allowed through this region. But this was a constant uh, struggle between the nations and with the constant eyes that were there in 1965, 5th June 1965, this canal was officially closed for next eight years and six days war revenged into this region and it was known as the time of Swiss crisis. Now why the Swiss crisis was important? On one side it was Egypt, on the other side it was Israel along with Britain and France who were trying to gain control over Swiss canal. However, political pressure gained momentum and there was pressure from United States, there was pressure from Soviet Union and also UN and finally these three parties that is Israel, Britain and France had to withdraw and this Swiss canal was brought into functioning again. Eight years it remained closed and it started uh, in uh, 1967 it, uh, it was closed and in 1974 it resumed its functioning, 75 it resumed its functioning and it was after this period of eight years that whole of the Swiss canal started to function again. If we talk about the recent developments, in 2014, we had the Bala development, uh, the Bala bypass that was seen. So if we zoom into this region, we would find that there is two important stretches that start. So if we move on to the north, this is the region of Port Said. And from the Port Said, we have two streams that pass. Now this is, as we said, the region of Port Said. Now from this region of Port Said, uh, we have two uh, regions that pass one is this and the other is the route here now both of these routes basically move down and then uh, we have moving further moving further down these two lanes combine into a single lane so as you could see you have a single stretch that passes here now here you have alcantara we'll talk about the canals and the tunnels and the bypass the bridges that have been there uh, further below we have the movement that is seen and then again we have a split into two so we have another split of the canal which is seen in this region and finally we move down there are two important lakes one is the timsa lake the first one that you can see here is the Timsa Lake and the next is the Bitter Lake. Both of these lakes have been very very important and this Bitter Lake as the name suggests it is hypersaline. The salinity levels are much higher. Also uh, we would understand the environmental aspects in a while but the idea is the uh, the region of Red, uh, Red Sea is much more saltier as compared to the Mediterranean Sea which has also affected the production and the environmental species that have been found there. Uh, coming on south, we would see uh, after the Timsa Lake and the Great Brita Lake, uh, we have the regions that pass through here and finally in the southernmost end, you would have the port uh, Tefik which is there and this is the southernmost region finally uh, merging into the region of Red Sea. So this is the idea about the Swiss canal that is there. Now coming back uh, to our next idea that is here we have we have the uh, structure that we can see here. So we have first of all the entry into Mediterranean Sea from Port Saint. The initial length of this uh, project was considered at around 164 kilometers. However, it was uh, extended later and the last point is at the verge of Red Sea at Port Tefik which is the Swiss port what it is also said. Two important ports are there. The Ahmad Hamid tunnel as you can see the Ahmad Hamid tunnel is here and this Ahmad Hamid tunnel is to the south of the Great Bitter Lake and the Small Bitter Lake. There were leakage problems that were seen uh, and a new watertight tunnel was built inside the existing old tunnel and that was the part of the Ahmad Hamid tunnel. 
not to the great bitter we have the lake timsa and not to timsa ismailia is the ismailia is one of the major towns and here we have al fardan bridge now al fardan bridge is a very important bridge because bridge because it is a swing snap bridge we'll understand what a swing snap bridge is but this is one of the longest swing span bridge in the world and it has a span of nearly 340 meters uh, this was previously destroyed during the swiss crisis now the swiss crisis that occurred was also known as the second saudi uh, the the second uh, arab israel conflict as it was called as and later on the, the bridge was again brought into action but as of now al farnan bridge bridge is not functional in nature then before it we do have swiss canal bridge and swiss canal bridge is also known as a very important bridge in the name of egyptian japanese friendship bridge so it is a kind of friendship bridge which was a high level road bridge that was constructed in the region of kantara so al kantara is the region where you have the swiss canal bridge that was established and the northmost point where you have the starting for uh, the swiss project is the port said so this is how we understand the structure now uh, as you can see most of the region is navigable in the central part we have two navigable routes so one of the routes which is coming towards the south is dedicated towards the eastern side and the western side is for the northern transport that occurs so the transport moves much more smoothly as uh, previously and on a typical day we say three convoy transits usually take place in the region of the canal and the speed of the transit is very very slow it is usually um, around 8 knots and uh, on an average through whole of the swiss canal the speed is around 16 knots so the speed is relatively so we'll understand that in a uh, while now this is what is a swing snap bridge so what happens is once you have the traffic that is there this bridge would remain closed and as soon as you want the traffic to flow the ships to move you would have the opening of the bridge that takes place and therefore it is known as a swing snap bridge and this swing snap bridge which is seen on al fardan is one of the longest bridge with a span of 340 meters that is seen presently not found functional however has been a very very vital part before the swiss crisis actually took place the next thing that we need to understand is the ship's wake now what is the ship's wake as the ship moves you have the currents and the ripples that are generated and this is how you have the drift that is seen in the oceans now why the speed is usually kept low as the ships are moving through the swiss canal region one of the major uh, reasons is the slow speed basically prevents the erosion that takes place from the banks so as the ship is moving it would have certain parts that it would erode on the banks or the channel and this would be significantly reduced if the speed of the ship is less if the speed is higher then this would be a problematic situation so that is again a very very important phenomena now besides the swiss canal route that we have already talked about there are uh, there are again alternate routes as we have seen one of the important alternate route is through the cape horn or which is also one of the uh, major region regions that has been seen but the another major region is in the north and this crosses the region of north sea as we can see in the blue line here now this north sea route is important during the summer months the 6 to 8 months are usually free and through that without the use of ice breakers ships can actually move from this region to the regions of china and taiwan from the regions of europe and therefore this north atlantic and the northern sea route is also used 
rather than uh, the other route this arctic route is again preferred for a limited time period uh, as we said only few weeks window is there where it is ice free where you have melting of the ice that is seen and without the use of ice breakers this route can be actually used the next important thing that we need to understand is the uh, salt water passage between the two now the most important thing to understand here is we have the two seas one is the mediterranean sea and the other is the red sea the height of the red sea is usually 1.2 meters higher than the mediterranean sea the next important thing is red sea is relatively more saltier and uh, more nutrient poor as compared to the atlantic and the mediterranean sea as a res result the species here are more endemic uh, and most of the species from the Red Sea region have found their way into the region of Eastern Mediterranean. So, Eastern Mediterranean, the original fauna and flora, the endemic species have been affected and most of the species from the Red Sea have actually incorporated into the territories here. Also, there is one important thing that we need to understand between the Mediterranean Sea and the Red Sea region. Now, what happens is there is a current between the Mediterranean Sea and and the Great Bitter Lake which is present here. So just above the Great Bitter Lake we have the Lake Timsa that is also present. Now the, uh, the currents which are located south of the Great Bitter Lake are usually tidal in nature and as a result we have uh, a kind of varying tides in the Swiss that is seen. However, north of it we have a separate circulation that usually occurs and the flow is north in the winters, south in the summers. So in north uh, it is in the winters it is northwards and in the summers it is southwards north of the Bitter Lake. South of the Bitter Lake as we said it is tidal in nature and uh, the main reason attributed to is the Great Bitter Lake. Now Bitter Lake the name suggests it is uh, bitter relatively not exactly bitter but it is also saline so it is hyper saline in nature and because of that you have a lot of migration of the species that is being blocked by this region and uh, the invasive species from the red sea actually dominate the region of the mediterranean sea also due to the building of the Aswan Dam and the Nile Delta, uh, the Nile Delta region we have seen that there has been uh, increasing silt deposit inflow of fresh water in the region of Mediterranean Sea that has been seen and there has been a natural dilution process that occurs. The next interesting thing is as we said the invasive species moves from the region of Mediterranean to the Red Sea. This process is what is known as as the Lespianus migration. Why it is known as the Lespianus migration? Because uh, Ferdinand de Lespis was one of the persons who basically worked on the Swiss Canal and on his name it is known as the Lespianus mi migration or it is also known as the Erythian migration. So this migration pattern is again very very important. The invasive species have been identified more than 300 species from the region of Red Sea have been seen in the regions of Mediterranean. Many of them are still not identified and under uh, development and seen. Now uh, as we could see this was about the Suez Canal. Recently the ever given sh the oil tanker that was stuck in one of the routes uh, that was seen has been important and this was one of the reasons that uh, there were numerous supports the tugs and the uh, support boys that were brought into the Swiss Canal and it has taken more than six days to actually uh, open up the passage and remove the blockage. This blockage has affected a lot of uh, movement and billions of uh, 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 dollars of cargo movement has been affected because of this blockage. A very very strategically important location, an economically viable solution between countries of the uh, European region connecting with the regions of Asia mainly let's say if there has to be a transport from Europe to the regions of China or Taiwan or from let's say uh, the Saudi Arabia to United States 
either ways we see that swiss canal is a very very viable solution and therefore uh, knowing about it has become very important we would be covering many more such interesting lectures for you stay tuned have a wonderful day ahead